Aperture is one of the biggest factors that affects how your video looks and feels. In this video, we're gonna look at what Aperture is, how it's measured, and how to pick the right Aperture settings for your video. Aperture is the opening that's created by the iris that's on the inside of your camera lens. And the iris is made up of several curved blades that overlap each other and they can open and close to allow more or less light enter the lens and hit the sensor. This is very similar to how our eyes can work to dilate or contract to allow more or less light to enter. Lenses are generally referred to by their maximum aperture, which depending on their construction, how they're manufactured, can be either a fixed maximum aperture or can be a variable maximum aperture. And the aperture can be adjusted in most cases from the camera body. However, on some cinema lenses and a lot of vintage lenses, you actually have a mechanical ring on the lens that needs to be rotated to adjust the aperture and, and how much the iris inside the lens can actually open or close. Aperture is measured in either f-stops or t-stops. And unless you're using cinema lenses, you're most likely to hear it referred to in f-stops. Now the F in f-stops refers to focal length. And so the way that we actually measure this is by taking the focal length of the lens and dividing that by the opening in the iris. So for example, if we have a 200 millimeter lens and the iris is open to 50 millimeters, that gives us an f-stop of F4. And because we're dividing the focal length by the opening in the iris, the larger the opening, the smaller the F number will be. So for example, if we have a 50 millimeter lens and we open up the iris to around 28 millimeters, that gives us F1.8. And this is a very common lens, 50 millimeters F1.8. Cinema lenses uses T-stops instead of F-stops because in video, it's much more important that a consistent and measured amount of light is entering and hitting the sensor to keep exposure levels the same even during lens changes. The T in T-stop actually stands for transmission, which is a measured amount of light that's transmitted through the lens and actually hits the camera sensor. Because F-stops is a measurement of the mechanics of the lens, not of the actual amount of light, there can be variances between lenses that have the same F-stop. This can be because of lens construction, the number of glass elements in the lens, coatings, and various other factors. Whereas with cinema lenses and T-stops, two lenses with the same T-stop theoretically should have the same amount of light and produce the same exposure, even if you change from lens to lens. So now we're gonna look at a few different ways that adjusting the aperture actually affects our final image. And the first thing to really look at is exposure. Because adjusting the aperture is actually changing the the size of the hole in the iris inside of your lens, it's actually physically allowing more or less light to pass through the lens and hit the sensor. And so if we adjust our aperture to make a larger hole, which would be a lower F number, for example, F1.8, that allows a lot of light to pass through that lens and can bring our exposure up. And vice versa, if we close that aperture down to something like F8 allows less light to pass through and, and can darken our image. And so we can use this to our advantage. If we're shooting in low light conditions, having a lens with a uh, large maximum aperture, F2.8 or higher, allows just that little bit of extra light to pass through the lens and hit the sensor and, and create a better exposed image. The second thing to look at is depth of field. And this is really what people are talking about when they say that they want that nice blurry background. Depth of field refers to how much of the image in regards to depth is actually in focus in the image. And so we can use aperture to adjust this. If we open our aperture up wider, we'll have a shallower depth of field. And if we close the aperture down, we have a deeper depth of field. And one way to think of this is like a plate of glass. So if we open our aperture up, we have a shallow depth of field, we have a thin piece of glass. And so if we close the aperture down to a larger F number, for example, F8, that plate of glass gets thicker. And so as we move our focus, that plate of glass moves back and forth and everything that is within that plate of glass will be in focus. Now the next one really goes hand in hand with depth of field, but we're gonna address it on its own because it's a certain quality that people are looking for in certain lenses, and that's what's called bokeh. Now bokeh is the blurriness that's caused by something being out of focus, and certain lenses are sought after because of the quality of the blurriness and how things roll off from 
being in focus and out of focus and just the overall quality and character that's created. And one of the biggest parts of bokeh is something that's called bokeh balls. And really the, what this is, is the way an out of focus light source looks when it passes through the iris or through the aperture and it creates a ball of light that's out of focus. The quality or the shape and just the overall look that a bokeh ball will have is based off of the quality and the shape of the iris because the iris is made up of several blades depending on how many blades they have and the shape of those blades they can sometimes create uh, an aperture or a hole that has defined corners and may not be as visually pleasing whereas if you have an iris that has many blades that are nicely shaped they'll create a nice round hole and that'll create a nice round bokeh ball contrary to a lot of what you may have heard online shooting with a wide open aperture is not always the best thing to do. Because a wide open aperture is gonna have a razor thin depth of field, having your subjects in focus can actually be a little bit challenging, even for some of the advanced autofocus systems that are on today's cameras. This is also an issue if you wanna have more than one subject in focus in your frame. Because the depth of field is gonna be so thin, and if your subjects are on different planes of focus, having both of them in focus at the same time in the same frame may be difficult, if not impossible. Another thing to watch out for is a wide open aperture creates a super blurry background, which in some cases can be desirable. But if you watch a lot of Hollywood movies, you'll see that the backgrounds aren't always super out of focus. They'll generally be a little bit out of focus, but you can still see what's going on in the background. And a lot of time and effort goes into set design. They're very intentional about the way that the background is designed and it would defeat the entire purpose if it was out of focus for the entire scene. Now that's not to say that it's never desirable to have a super blurry background. When your subject is in focus and nothing else is, that can create a lot of emotion and really help tell your story. The key here is to make sure that whatever aperture you're using, however much depth of field you have, is helping you to tell your story, not detra detract from it. And so knowing that, and knowing that in video, our shutter speed is typically fixed based off the frame rate we're using, it can be kind of difficult to get your exposure right where you want it. Now we can open or close our aperture to help us get our exposure closer to where we want, but that can affect the way our image looks. And so if you wanna learn a little bit more about setting the ISO on your cameras to get your exposure, exposure closer to where you want, I go more in depth on that in a video that I'll link down in the description below. And so I hope you got some value out of this video. And if you did, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons and let me know down in the comments if there's any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. I'll see you in the next one.